Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Dr. Enolia Fodi, and welcome. Welcome to the Infinite Way, where spirituality meets humanity. And it brings me such great pleasure to introduce to you Philip Chang. Philip Chang is an intuitive energy who brings effortless ease to his session. After attempting to fit into the real world, and denying his psychic abilities, he was passed over for promotions for 10 years, leading to feelings of betrayal. Despite being taught that hard work and perseverance would be rewarded, he felt taken advantage of. This experience guided him back to the spiritual path. After resigning, Philip spent the next 17 years discovering his passion for helping people overcome their fears and use their psychic abilities freely. Welcome, Philip. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm so, I'm so happy to have you here, excited to have you here. And um, we're gonna have this great conversation and looking so forward to it. Oh, same, same here, Anelia. <laughs> so let's start with our topic. And our topic is finding your spiritual path. And in finding your spiritual path, well, you know that everybody wants to kind of know your story. A little bit of brief information was given in that introduction you gave us, but talk to us a little bit about who Philip Chang is and where you started in life on your path. What oh. was that? Incident. Yes, um, my story is um, pretty, it started very in early childhood. So in the beginning, I was really intuitive, but I really wanted to deny it. Whatever I did, it's just that I couldn't fit in. And I also grew up in a traditional Chinese household where um, there was a lot of teachings about spirituality, but there's also like trying to blend in to um, the Western world. So it was actually just a little bit of a clash between fitting in in modern society as well as like bring in um, spirituality. So what happened was I grew up with a single mom and that's actually like I would say the modern world because she was the first um, Chinese woman in kind of town in Los Angeles basically to get a divorce and also had to raise three children on her own. So with that understanding, it's just that, you know, I always kind of like felt out of place because I was the first person without a father by his side and always being raised by women. So that was my first like inkling that I was really like out of place. But in addition to that, I was also really, uh, right now, uh, I was also seeing things that I could not explain, hearing things and also in the spiritual world. But I really didn't want to so like believe it because of the fact that I might be labeled like crazy. So I just so like said, okay, I'm shutting this off and just really going to be in the normal world. But it just uh, it just left a hole in my body and also it manifested like um, in other ways, like being really angry at the world. And again, I couldn't fit in no matter what I tried. So I again decided to just say, okay, you know, the, the heck with spirituality and I'm just going to just live life freely. But um, so what I did was I went into like the corporate world and just decided to say, okay, you know what? I needed to get a job and fit in the world and also pay expenses. So back in the 1990s, when it was really easy to get a job um, without a degree, without um, any type of experience, what I did was I started working in the mailroom in the largest financial services company in California. 
um, work my way up to uh, a, a commissions person that helps brokers um, to, uh, track down their commissions when it was actually like missing. But each time I would apply for promotions, I was uh, again passed over and I just couldn't understand why. And this contributed to more of my anger and it manifested in my body and I just couldn't understand why. So um, right before the market crash back in 2000, I decided to leave. It, it was actually the housing crisis. I decided to leave and say, okay, I'm going to try myself in real estate uh, investing and everything like that. So I was really... Uh, I was really good at it, but six months into that new career, I had a seizure and mm -hmm. I just, I didn't know what was going on. I spent um, two weeks in the hospital. Uh, yeah, it was two weeks in the hospital and they just, um, just tried to diagnose me with like everything, but nothing actually came up. So they just released me and just said, okay, you know what? Um, you can go home with this medication. Well, seven days later, what happened was uh, I had an allergic reaction to the medication that they gave me. So I was rushed back to the hospital and spent another two weeks there. And what happened there was that I spent another two weeks in the hospital where the doctors really was flushing my uh, blood out of this med uh, my flushing my blood um, and also cleaning up my system mm -hmm. from this medication that they gave me, which later I found out was banned uh, for use now. But the worst thing that happened wasn't even that. Um, the worst thing was about 30 days later, the bill came and everything that mm. I had saved and also worked for completely like Ed, I oh, lost wow. everything. So, wow. so from there, I wasn't able to drive to do like the real estate investing and I couldn't uh, figure out what was going on. So the question always came up, like, why me? Why at this time in like the prime of my life? I was in my thirties. I had two houses paid off, but my account was like zero and almost negative because of the fact that um, I didn't have insurance at that time. Mm -hmm. So so at that point, I just decided on this discovery, like why me? I read books. I uh, found teachers that some of them did not agree with me until about like 10 years ago where I found um uh, the person that actually resonated with me that to tell, helped me understand from really um, the beginning, like the seizure and also to um, my search, what had happened. And I found out later uh, through her help was that that was actually my first spiritual awakening where it's like, wow. okay, you know, you, we're giving you like a, big kick in the pants to really mm -hmm. say okay it's in, it's time to start like uh, your spiritual path right now or get back on your spiritual path and along the way I just said okay you know what I like this I don't like this and you know what I'm just gonna do it like um, not, I'm not I'm not sure if I should say this but half-assedly <laughs> yeah, it's okay it's okay yeah yeah. You know, I, I want to go back through some of the things that you said, and I want to capture them. And the first thing that really struck me is that as a child, you saw things and you felt things. And, you know, there are other children that are out there who who have the ability to see, who have the ability to feel, the, you know, um, the, the other realm, you know, and how did your family handle that? What was it that you had to deal with that that made you shut down? Because I, I, I think about the other kids that are out there and they might be listening to this. They need to hear that it's okay 
to be able to see differently and feel differently. They need to be able to understand that, you know, it doesn't make you, uh, you shouldn't shut down and it doesn't make you odd. That is, it's just the fact that you're gifted, you know, that each person comes with a different gift. And um, we, we need to be able to hold on to that gift. I mean, what are your thoughts about that? I do actually like it, um, like the way you actually say it. I call it like the childhood superpower. It's just that each yeah. one of us actually have like an innate superpower within us. And what it is, is mine happens to be the psychic abilities. And to everybody, I think I would say that it's okay. That, you know, you may be able to see things that other people aren't able to see or be an empath if you are one or even all of them, too. It's like it's quite OK. It's <laughs> just like for me, it's just that um, there was some uh, as I go back uh, again to my own childhood, it was more that we wanted to fit you. They, my parents and my grandparents really wanted me to fit in in this world. So what they did was they found um, shamans, Chinese shamans and also medicine mm -hmm. people and decided to bound the powers. And wow. it's just that I later found out it was more like, uh, yeah, bounding the powers and just so like saying, okay, you have to fit in in this world and let's just do that. And, but it always sort of like, always, there was always like leakage of like the, uh, the supernatural or the, the, the superpower that actually came out. And then each year or each few years, my grandmother would do some ritual with, again, this medicine woman and also yeah. this shaman that actually helped me like, okay, bound these powers again, or bound these um, unworldly yeah. things. <laughs> yes, these gifts, these unworldly things, the things that we can't explain. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I really just want to emphasize this, especially with the potential audience that could be looking at that. And you're saying, well, how can you say there's nothing wrong with that? It's because we pray. And when we pray, right? Or if you believe in a higher power or supreme power, whatever the case may be. And I always kind of default to the medicine wheel, right? And the medicine wheel, like if you had your arms spread out straight across, right? And you had your body vertical and your arms horizontal, right? The, the horizontal would be the physical realm. It would be, you see, touch, taste, smell here, your regular senses, you know? And then when we look to the spiritual realm, why is that so unfathomable? We're looking inwardly. It's the place where we pray. It's the place where we connect to spirit. It's the universe within. Why wouldn't we think that there aren't other worldly things in that universe? Why wouldn't we think that there's realms, dimensions that, that can be seen or unseen that are there when we choose to look? You know, and that when you are not biased, by the human condition that that world can be seen, that world can be felt, that you, you have an intuitive sense or you have a knowing that something's gonna take place or that you have a knowing not to do something, to go right instead of left, because in that realm, it's telling you don't go left. So, you know, I, I, I just, you know, wanna emphasize that we have, practicalities that 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 associate with that realm but yet we want to act like oh no it can't exist that's too woo woo that's taboo you know right it, the first i would say really uh really to to what you're saying is that it's almost like when the cross appears out of nowhere and then everybody goes and worships it and then put, goes and puts everybody's picture on it just to make sure that the uh, cross actually gives everybody a blessing. I've only seen this like once or twice in physical where everybody has uh, also saw it as well. The whole entire neighborhood gathered in like this one house and so like saw this like cross appear at uh in the air for no reason at all yeah and i say this with 
only uh, with all due respect to everybody, it's just that the the media does a terrible job of like helping like the kids uh, and also myself um, with owning the superpower and also mm -hmm. gifts because of like, you know, um, the sixth sense or poacher guys and then everything like that is just like it's made out into like being this very fearful world but it's really not sometimes right. it may be like you know you just have to have to, an understanding of like what's going on an understanding a vocabulary uh, 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 understanding how to approach it Let's talk about that because this was all about finding your spiritual path. And as you shared your story, I realized that you had to look back and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you look back to realize that you had that, that precipice of, of moment that it was like, oh, that was my spiritual awakening, you know? So talk to us a little bit about looking back and realizing what that was for yourself. But for me, it's always because uh, I'm a very analytical person from uh, from childhood. So I'm like analyzing every single moment of like in time, like what happened to me. So for me, I would say that, you know, looking back, it's like some of the things that I was doing, um, I did leave out that because I was passed over and also because I was denying these psychic abilities, I also turned to uh, drinking as well. Mm -hmm. It's like I was really like drinking pretty much like night. Uh, um, I would say nine to five, I would be like working in, in the corporate world on Fridays is actually a free for all. So what we did was we worked really hard during the week and then mm -hmm. by the weekend, like okay everybody goes to happy hour and you know from there it's like okay I took a, a left turn where I you know started drinking like even after like the nine to five during the day yeah. and sometimes it actually continued throughout the day too so in, in looking back it's like probably it would be like some of the things that I did that led up to the seizure, but it's also um, the idea that, again, I was using another substance to deny what was happening, which was, mm -hmm. okay, my uh, my guides, my spirit was saying, okay, enough is enough. It's time to, you know, explore, like, what you have been denying for so long. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the other... Part of that, too, that I, I, I wanted to ask you about was you had a seizure. And many times when trauma happens in our lives, we come out the other end of it a, a completely different person. Was that the case for yourself? I, I would say yes. For for me, it was more like, um, uh, how does people say, the five stages of grief. It's like the five mm -hmm. stages of like recovery is almost the same thing. It's like we go through like, okay, first it's like the, the bargaining phase. Okay, if I don't drink or if I, you know, just start in the, or stay on a narrow path, my spiritual path or just the path, this would never happen to me ever again. Then it's, all, then it's also the blame too. It's like, okay, you know, I'm blaming like myself for like, you know, denying um, the spiritual gifts and also uh, drinking. Then there's also like, um, you know, okay, the grieving process is okay. I lost everything. It's like, why me type of thing. And it's not completely like standard. It's not like the whole entire five steps. There's like, okay, steps where I go back and then it's like, okay, I'm grieving because I've lost everything. Then I'm going back to like bargaining. If I do like this from now on, will I, mm -hmm. you know, get everything I want? If yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. It makes a lot of sense. So what would you share with those people who are looking for a spiritual path in terms of recognizing their gifts? Because you recognize, well, let's talk about that. 
you recognize your gift. We have a gift and we recognize what it means to us. So your gift, what it meant to you was that you get to see into the other realm. What it meant to you was that you get to feel something in the other realm. But then when we refocus that to another person, not the, the realm, but just like seeing into the other realm of another person or seeing into the other realm of what's happening around another person, that's that's a different focus. Yes. So how did that how did how do you transition that? Is there is there is there a transition of that? Or it's just that how you perceive, no matter what you're looking at, you 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 pick up. Oh, it's, um, I don't think it's an art and also a science because. Okay, um, that's what I'm asking. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it, it's more like, okay, you know, again, the, the first few times is like when I finally acknowledged it, um, the first thing is like the fear stage. It's like, okay, Ooh. I'm seeing, uh, seeing all this stuff and it's sometimes it may be, uh, I should, I don't know if I should use the word dark, but sometimes it's like a a shadowy being. And if you don't know how to communicate with it, you can be like really afraid of it, thinking that okay, it may be the devil or it may be like something ominous. But then, you know, once you actually get, once I learned how to, I would say, hone uh, by asking really like, okay, what is this type of being? Then I get a little bit more interested. Then I'm like really like focused on like looking at like say beings and also other people's energy as well. But then, you know, going back to um, the media for a second, it's almost like, okay, um, there's always people that do parlor tricks. Where it's mm -hmm. like, okay, there's uh, fortune tellers. And uh, and that's not a bad thing because that actually, again, opens up like the world to uh, having um, a psychic energy out there, but it's a, in a different way. So when I first like told a few people about like being able to see things, it was like, okay, what do you see now? Or do I have to see <laughs> around me? And things like that. But um, later on, when I went into like, say, uh, some formal training, it was, okay, now I don't actually have to uh, read everybody. I don't have to say, okay, there's um, your your ex-girlfriend like standing next to you who has passed or something like that. My, right. my best one was um, a... Um, I was at a men's conference and what happened was uh, a few days before this colleague of mine, um, his brother has passed and I'm like staring at the guy during uh, the whole entire conference. He might be thinking that I'm weird. I'm staring at the guy, but it's like, I'm in the background. I'm like communicating with his brother who has just passed three days ago. And when he shared it with everybody from the group after the meeting. It was like, oh my God, I actually saw like dead people. And 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 you know, to me that it doesn't even dwell on me to 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 think that way. I have to share with you, I've had a couple of moments, right? I, I remember I was doing a women's retreat and it was like 20 women in the room. And one of the women had just had her son pass. And we had just finished doing a little mini meditation. So I was really just tapped in and I just felt so calm and at ease. And it's hard to, to describe the, the state of mind that you're in, but I go to these moments when I'm coming out of meditation where I can see the physical energy. I can just see the glow of, of everyone's aura and, and just where they're at and the colors and, and everything. But I did, I saw this dark shadowy figure standing right on, right on the woman's shoulder, standing right behind her. And then I saw it holding her, like just wanting to comfort her, you know, and then letting go. And I realized it was her son. It was the son who was trying to give her comfort and peace to say that, you know, he was okay. 
And so I just shared with her what I saw and I shared with her that he's trying to hold you and he, he wants you to give peace. And this isn't something that happens to me normally. This was the anomaly. I, I actually was just so tapped in in the realm that I, I got to see that. And I, I think you're right. You know, what happens is that typically we're so in fear instead of just, I just, you know, like I, I see someone standing right by your side. I feel like it's your son. It has to be your son. And then when I saw the, the arms go around her, that the shadowy arms go around her, it's like, it's your son. He's trying to tell you he loves you. You know, and I get it, you know, but, but people go to fear. Is, oh, is it like that experience? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, I, I always tell people it's actually, we begin with the fear first. It's like, okay, we're okay. not, yeah, it's like, okay, we're not normal if we actually see things. And again, going back to like the media, the sixth sense, I see dead people type of thing. And then, yeah. then it's like, okay, once you learn a little bit how to communicate with it, if you want to, um, then it get, gets a little bit more interesting. So you're like mm. a little bit more like, okay, I'll see that just a little bit more. But then there's also, again, you go back a little bit back and forth between interest and fear until you actually find like a medium between the two. Yeah. And then how do you get them to just calm down and stop? Sometimes they're knocking on your door. They want to get your attention because I I believe that you end up being a light in their world and they can see you and they can see that you're capable of seeing them. And so then you might get a crowd that just wants you to communicate because they recognize that you can communicate. How do you deal with that if you deal with that? Oh yes, I, I I deal with that um, um in, in the past before I actually really took control of like my own energy and of my own space, and it's more like um, how my teacher and I explained it to me is that you're at a higher um, spiritual realm than or vibration than they are because they have actually passed. And you have free will to so like say, no, I'm actually not going to be doing communications with anybody. It, it's almost like um, there's another show, um, Jennifer Love Hewitt, where she goes uh -huh. down and chases like everybody to give like communications. And I, I see that as being like so tiring if everybody comes to me and I have to go all around the world just to so like say, hey, you know what? So somebody's trying to communicate with you. So yeah. so again, it's more like okay, you're you, um, and this actually takes a little bit of training. Is that you do have like the free will to say to them, you know, in a peaceful way that you know I'm not doing this anymore. It's like you have yeah. to find somebody else. <laughs> yes. Yes. So does your focus always reside one-on-one -on -one with individuals? Do you feel a connection to intuitively reading like what's going on in the world, the world events or anything like that? I, I, I haven't tried that yet. Um, well, actually, no, I actually have like read the earth. It's like what's going on globally on the earth and also like what's going on in the U.S. as well. It's like with the political situation, and that's that's the only one I'll probably talk about is just that what happened back in 2000 brought up like the all the animosity that the person Trump basically brought up like all the an animosity that was everybody that was holding inside, and it allowed everybody to really um, express it. In some in not like gentle way, some like a little bit more gentle, and it may be able to like free up like the um, whole entire world and also the country so that we can vibe a little bit higher too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you know that I would feel remiss if I didn't say you had to do just a little bit of reading before you left, right? Mm -hmm on the oh. show so I'm the only one here right oh yes so. 
Um, so do you want to do you want to do a little bit of reading? Oh, oh sure. Sure. I I leave it to you. Oh, okay. Um, I, I heard the, the phrase sleep. And uh, the, what that means to me and what I'm hearing is that um, you may want to relax just a little bit more. It's just mm -hmm. that you are running a lot and it keeps you awake at night. And I see the legs are like really tired a lot, especially just right above the ankle. Um, let's see if there's anything else for you. I have to say that that's correct, especially in the last few weeks. Absolutely. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, I, I hear that you are planning a trip and it's a feeling of like you want to, again, travel more too. And it's a feeling of like between, I hear um, either Europe or the United States, those two. It's like, I can't, uh, I don't get the information of like where, but it's like Europe and also uh, the US. And... That's correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's absolutely correct. I will be going to the US via Europe. So, and I have a long layovers in Portugal, you know, oh, so. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if there's anything else for you. I, I get the word relax uh, a lot. It's just that not the, um, not only the, the, the physical where you're running, there's also a little bit of um, just relax a lot more. It's a feeling of a little bit of anxiety within your body. It's like you have to get it done. And it's like when you don't get it done, it causes like this anxiousness and you're also like shaking too. Um, do, do, do you drink coffee a lot too? No, I don't, but I am studying. I am studying philosophy on my own self pace. Mm -hmm. And so I meet with a mentor every week and the anxiety of making sure that I get my work done before I meet. And so that, that race of the mind, as well as the physical is a lot of reading. Cause I'm reading like a couple of books a week. It's, oh, it's really? like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you tap right into it, and no, no one would know that except the person that I'm meeting with, right? So oh yeah. yes, <laughs> so yeah, I get the relaxed part because it's like I, 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 my anxiety of raising my knowledge base to have discussions each week has 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 been like the goal, and I've been meeting that goal, and I've been proud of myself, but it it takes a lot. It takes a lot. Now I'm not reading like 100 page books. I'm reading like 400, 500, 700 page books. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, wow. That, that's interesting. <laughs> I just want to say thank you. Philip, I mean, you're phenomenal. Um, what would you share for those who are looking to start their their path and and not quite sure what to do or how to tap into their gift like you have? What would you say? What would you say to those those individuals? I, I would say find a teacher that actually guides you through this, um, and also the one that actually resonate with you. It may be like one or two that you may actually have to try out before you really like find uh, the teacher that actually resonates with you. And from there is pretty much just follow what your teacher like explains to you 
then it may actually be a, a little bit easier. Uh, just a little bit of side note, I did have a teacher um, before I found my, the one that resonated with me that was not in high vibration, meaning mm. like he, um, he was a martial artist, so he actually made everybody like do the martial way instead of like helping us really understand um, the, the psychic abilities. He wanted just nothing to do with it, but he actually does everything with it too. So he would just so like say, okay, you're not like ready for that just yet. Uh, <laughs> I love it. And how can people reach out to you and what kind of healing work or intuitive work, or do you want to share what your sessions are or look like? No, yes. Um, for, uh, I don't actually have a website yet, so you can email me at uh, he and C-H-A-N-G. Yeah. 360 at gmail.com and I just so like say 360 I'm like 360 degree all over um a session with me is really just that you sometimes maybe that um you will have to do a little bit of work afterwards but not a lot probably um just really take it easy after like the sessions um but on a typical session, what we'll do is see what you're actually needing at that time. And if you want to work on something in particular, from there, it's just going to be like what um, your body needs and also your spirit needs. It may be um, an energy healing or it may be a past life reading or it may be um, an aura healing. And all of these are really like combined into like the energy healing where I reach you and just let you know, hey, is this like what you want to work on? Or is there something in particular you like to work on? And from there, we just go from there. But of course, uh, the one caveat I do have to uh, say is that um, I won't uh, I wouldn't clear anything that you actually don't want me to clear nor see anything that you don't want me to see. So you actually have a choice to say, okay, you know what? I don't want you to see this. I don't want to work on this at this time as well. So you actually have free will and also free control of the sessions too. That's beautiful. Philip, I want to say thank you. Oh my goodness, this has been wonderful. It's been wonderful having this discussion with you. Is there any last thing you would like to share with our audience? Uh, no, I just, um, how is uh, the Catholics do it? It's just like the shake hand, go with peace. Yes. Well, absolutely. Go in peace. And if you know that someone you know will benefit from hearing Philip's conversation and story, please share this episode with them. And if you like what you saw, please like us, please subscribe to us. And thank you. Thank you for attending another episode of The Infinite Way, where spirituality meets humanity. And thank you, Philip, for attending. Oh, thank you. And take care, everyone, for now. Bye.